Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel VKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about C1, that means Software Requirement Engineering. This is one of the important process step in ESPICE under Software Engineering Process Group. In this video, we are going to discuss about what is Software Requirement Engineering and what all are the things we need to consider before we start the software requirement analysis. What will happen if the software requirement engineering analysis goes wrong in our project? Those all are we are going to discuss in this video. First, we can start with what is ASPICE. ASPICE is nothing about automotive spice. It is a process assessment model used in the automotive industry to evaluate and improve software development process. It is developed by the Automotive Special Interest Group. And it is used to evaluate how well an organization develops the software and systems for automotive products. And it provides a framework for organizations to define and implement best practices for developing software in vehicles, ensuring quality and compliance. Why ASPICE is important? ASPICE is needed in the automotive industry to ensure high quality, reliable and compliant software development process. It provides a structured framework for managing software development, promoting continuous improvement and mitigating risk associated with complexity and safety critical system. In ASPICE, the very important thing is ASPICE capability level. OEM and tier 1 supplier will combine and they will decide that what ASPICE level they have to achieve in the project. Already we discussed about the ASPICE capability level. I have mentioned the video in the description. You can watch it. This picture from ASPICE 3, but currently we have a latest ASPICE 4 as well, so you can go through it. So in the ASPICE 3, if you see that we have a lot of process groups, the important thing is system engineering process group and software engineering process group. In this video, we are going to discuss about the software engineering process group important one is software requirements analysis, but this is also a V model. So you can see it start from a SIS1. At the end with SIS5, it will go through from SV1 to SV6 as well. So, what is software requirement analysis? SV1 refers to the software requirements analysis process within the automotive space from framework. What is the purpose of SV1? The main goal of SV1 is to transform the software related aspect of system requirements into a clear, structured set of software requirements. So, before SV1, in the system team, they used to do all the analysis from a SIS1 to SIS3 because C1 follows SIS2 and SIS3 to do the C1 requirement analysis. And this ensures the software development is based on well-defined, principle and verifiable requirements, reducing the risk of misinterpretation, overlooked functionality or non-compliance with customer and regulatory expectations. In C1, First, we will specify the software requirements. Then, we will go to the structuring the software requirements. Then, we will go for analyze software requirements. Then, analyze the impact on operating environment. After that, we will plan for a develop verification criteria. And bidirectional traceability also we need to consider. Then, we will consider the ensure consistency. The finally, communicate agreed software requirements. What all are the key activities in C1? First of all, we have to analyze the system requirements because C1 begins by reviewing the system or customer requirement to identify those relevant to software. So, the very important thing is we have to first analyze the system requirements. Then we have to specify the software requirements. That means the process translates the system level requirements into detailed software requirements means distinguishing between functional and non-functional. Functional means what the software must do and non-functional means related to performance and reliability aspects. Then we have to structuring the requirements. So requirements are organized often by clustering related items to improve clarity and manageability. Then, then another one is we have to ensure the traceability which means five directional traceability. So, in the bidirectional traceability, each software requirement must be traceable back towards originating system requirement and forward to design, implementation and test artifacts. So, this traceability is the cornerstone of ASPICE and is a critical for change management and verification. 
then we have to check the assessing the feasibility and verifiability that means the requirements are evaluated for technical feasibility and whether they can be verified through subsequent testing or analysis then we have to do the documenting and managing requirements so that process results in formal documentation such as software requirement specification that means SRS and maintains records for traceability and change control. So here we will use a very famous tool called doors or plastic. So these all are the common tools is used to document this V1. So this is a diagram for maintaining the bidirectional traceability for an example see here first we will start from a stakeholder requirement then from there system requirements will be derived that means sys2 then it will go to system architecture so system requirements and system architecture is the upward traceability for software requirements so software requirements will be derived by considering a system requirements and system architecture and that will be given input to software architecture meaning sv2 and also to sv3 but sv3 you will do the software detail design and unit construction so software requirements will be given to software architecture and software detail design and unit construction so these all are the things we have to properly maintain it in as a bidirectional traceability now why sv1 is important the SV1 is critically important in ASPICE and in any software development lifecycle because it lays the foundation for all downstream activities in the software engineering process. First, we can start with what is defines the what before the how, meaning before designing or coding, you must be absolutely clear on what the software should do. That's what v1 ensures for an example it will understand the system level expectation and capture software specific behavior and constraints and it will avoid the assumptions the next one is the bridges the gap between system and software so system level requirements are often abstract or hardware related to v1 so it will translate system level needs into actionable software requirements and it will ensure software and hardware engineers are properly aligned and enables good architecture and design in SV2 level. If V1 is properly, sorry, sorry, poorly designed, then architecture and design will be based on weak foundations. That will lead to over engineering or under design. It will, and, and it will costly rework later too. So we need to have a proper V1 for enabling a good architecture and design. The next one is supports verification and validation. So here, every software requirement must be testable. It means SV1 ensures the requirements are defined in a way that allows for clear test case derivation. That means supporting SV4 and SV5 and drives traceability from requirement to test case and to validation. The next one is minimize the rework and defects. So many software bugs from ambiguous or missing requirements. So that is why we need a proper SV1 requirement analysis and clear and complete SV1 will avoid costly fixes in later stages, meaning in coding and testing and support change and impact analysis. So with the proper traceability, example when consider in a way if a system requirement changes then sv1 allows quick identification of which software requirements are impacted and it also helps in impact analysis and change management so these all are the very important steps is considering that why sv1 is important and also you can consider it will be essential for our aspice compliance and it will improve the communication like uh, shared and reviewed requirements ensure the all stakeholder between developers tester architectures architects all are in the same page so these all are the things really we need a we need proper sv1 in our project if you consider a summary if you don't know what to build then you will never build it right so that's why we need to do the proper sv1 and sv1 ensures you build the right thing with clear and consistent and verifiable requirements making it the cornerstone of quality software development in aspice so that's why in every project sv1 is very important and we have to do the proper requirement analysis before we start the coding or any of the further steps Hope you really like this video. You can share it with your friends. Thank you so much.